Well, we are going to uh, talk about the gifts of the Spirit um, in a series here on Sunday mornings. This morning, though, I'm going to come at it a little bit different, um, and it might even be a little shorter because we've got some things to to pray on, and and this is prayer time also. So let's read just a few things when it comes to uh, 1 Corinthians 12. Uh, verse one. Now about the spiritual gifts, the special endowments of the supernatural energy. I love how the Amplified says that it's a special endowment of super on the natural energy. Brethren, I do not want you to be misinformed. Now, another translation says, I don't want you to be ignorant about it. Misinformed can, you know, ignorant just sounds more condescending, doesn't it? Don't be ignorant, which really just means I didn't know, right? I'm, I'm misinformed or, or whatever. Um, But it sounds nicer in the Amplified. I don't want you to be misinformed. You know that when you were heathen, you were led off after idols that could not speak habitually as impulse directed and whenever the occasion might arise. And then he goes on and he talks about, um, of course, the gifts in a deeper way, which we'll we'll be getting to. And then we flip over all the way, well, at least my Bible, we flip over. Um, Toward the end of the chapter, he's talking about, um, you know, teachers and apostles and and all the different um, um, positions in the church and, and how they're gifted and things like that. And, and like I said, I'm going to come at this a little bit different. We're going to go to the last verse first. First, we know that he doesn't want us to be ignorant or he doesn't want us to be misinformed about the gifts. Um, but the problem is whenever uh, we teach on the gifts of the Spirit or the baptism of the Holy Spirit, um, many times our brain, our, our flesh just shuts our brain off, our soul Just goes, uh uh-huh, yeah, I know there's gifts, and yeah, I know, and I know, right? Um, You know, if this is the first time you heard about it, it might be a little bit more interest, but there seems to be, even like with healing and different things like that, if you've learned any amount, there is a shutoff valve in the brain that just goes, I know this. Have you noticed that? I know this, yeah, okay, well, maybe I'll learn something, but I know this. But the end of the chapter kind of sums up what we're really going to go after this morning And that's verse 31. But earnestly desire and zealously cultivate the greatest, the best gifts and graces, the higher gifts and and the choice graces. And yet I will show you a still more excellent way, one that is better by far and the highest of them all, which is love. And so the earnest desire. Now, uh, another translation says to covet the best gifts. To covet the gifts. And usually when you hear the word covet, that's, you know, thou shalt not covet. You know, it comes to your mind and it's like, we're not supposed to covet. Um, you know, but in here, he's actually telling us. It's like a command, like this, this is what you need to do. So the word covet means really desire strongly like a hunger. Really desire strongly like a hunger. So if we go and we do maybe a traditional teaching of where we're going to talk about the gifts of the spirit. So I start talking about how exciting they are and this is what they do and this is what we can have and everything. We won't lock into it the same unless we upfront covet it. So this is the part that uh, we're going to pray on this morning. And even as part of the series for anyone listening to to this or watching this online, we're able to... uh, Lock into that fact that, you know, how bad do I really want this? Now, we can hear about the gifts um, and hear about the operations and those types of things. But if we're not really hungry for that, then it's just we're hearing. The application won't follow, right? So to change that, we go to the last part and say, earnestly desire and zealously cultivate the greatest and the best gifts and graces, the higher gifts and the choicest graces. Now, the other thing that I think is a um, um, misconception or where we could be as a body ignorant, like he says, about these things, misinformed about these things. I run into people all the time who feel like, um, you know, that that there's a gift operating. Um, and, and I'll give you an example of this. Like, say somebody is just, like, really smart. Like, they've got one of those brains, you know, um, that are they can just remember things, physics is exciting to them, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, their memory is really good, all of that type of stuff. Then people will assume many times, well, they will automatically operate in the gifts of wisdom because they're that smart. See, that's a natural way of approaching the gifts of the spirit. 
and we can be ignorant about that. We can we can think that um, you know you have to be a certain thing, and then that will denote you know why this is this particular gift's going to operate on you. Now I'm not that brain. And uh, the gift of wisdom has operated through me. And that's what freaks you out. You're kind of like, well, you can clearly see that was not me. <laughs> when that happens, it's like there's a clear line. Like I know in myself, like, thank you, Lord, because I would have no idea what to say. And, and so we have to understand that up front, that we can't have what I would call assumed gifts. Well, I would assume they would operate in this. Or he's a great teacher at school, so he's going to just operate in teaching uh, the scripture. Maybe, I mean, maybe that, you know, that, that might operate a certain way, but to have the anointing flowing on that, maybe that person doesn't know how that, that works, hasn't covered it, how the, the gift of God can work through him and on him or her. Um, and, and then just, we assume, oh, it's there. It's there. Um, I'm a great reader of people. That is not a brag. That's just something that I know. I can read people that's. Um, but you can read people just by being hypervigilant, having gone through a lot of trauma. You can read people in your soul. You can look at somebody and know when they're upset, know by the facial expression, if they're carrying their self wrong, whatever you notice, boom. Someone else might not notice that right away. Is that a gift of the spirit? Not necessarily, right? And um, so sometimes when I go down the prayer lines and things like that, if I know that I am reading that person just by how they're standing in front of me. And I'm like, this is what I know is happening right now. I will tell them right out. This is what I see, right? This is not a word of knowledge. I'll clarify that. Um, because I don't want people thinking just because I, you know, I said, well, you look like you're sad or whatever. There was a word of nothing. No, actually, I just saw that you were crying. <laughs> and so <laughs> and I kind of noticed that you were sad. And, but a lot of times we will hyper spiritualize that. Like she just knew she knew I was sad. Well, it's kind of obvious and it might not be obvious to somebody else, but it was definitely obvious to me, but that does not necessarily mean I was really flowing in the gifts. See? Um, we're going to take these things apart. We're going to talk about them. Um, at the same time, I really felt like the Lord said, do the last thing first. Because what it will do is it will set us up different in how we receive and how we even look at it. Because really, what's the point of talking about the gifts if we're not coveting them? Then it's just a knowledge-based thing of like, you know, yep, I know how the gifts work and who knows if I have any or what's happening and and uh, here's the thing, you know, I, I like to challenge things and, and covet them all. That's not traditionally taught. I, I'm like, why am I ripping myself off here? I mean, if he tells you to, to do that with the gifts, it's not to pick out one and say, well, I operate in this. And so that's what I'm really going to hyper go after so that it even develops more or whatever. No, actually, I want them all. And maybe I operate in, in one at one time, um, you know, because really when I talked about the best gifts, like it talks about this, what, how you can kind of figure out what's the best gift in the moment is the gift that's needed. Whatever gift's needed at that moment is the best gift at that moment, right? And so there's no gift that kind of elevates above. It's whatever is needed at that moment for encouragement, whatever is needed at that moment for deliverance, whatever is needed at that moment for salvation, for healing, for awareness, for rhema words, for whatever that, that's going to happen. But those things don't take place without the coveting part. Um, and I find it really interesting that, you know, if you were going to covet food, um, just think about it, you know, like a lot of you just ate breakfast. So, you know, we're not really in the mood to covet too much right now because you're full, right? Think about that. Um, but if this was our third day of meetings and we were fasting, there's going to be a different, you know, and somebody's making toast out there even. You'll walk by and you're like, why are you doing that? I oh. And it's like the smells get exaggerated. There's certain things like popcorn that really, they just woof, and, and it's just like they're, they pull you in, right? Um, when you're hungry. And so uh, a good roast will do that too. You know, it just permeates the, the smell in the house. And suddenly you'll find yourself earnestly desiring and zealously <laughs> trying to find a way to uh, get to that roast, Right? 
So this is where prayer and fasting comes in in a different way that a lot of times we'll pray and fast. And, and you can go to that series also that was taught on, on Sunday mornings and, and uh, during prayer time um, where we fast thinking that we're going to really change that other person. Now, there is a fast that can work on that other person's heart. But the main reason for fasting is to change us. Just think about if we began to fast in a way that said, I'm going to put my flesh to the side so that I can allow my spirit, who I am, who is already really hungry for God. Think about it. I mean, if our soul just gets out of the way, we first sense how hungry we are for God. If our soul's in the way, then we can't really tell because our soul kind of gets satisfied. And then that'll be the goal where we, let's just feed our soul. And, you know, we'll feel a little twinge every once in a while here. And when we're hungry here, it is automatic for us. Um, you know, if you're hurting, you, you'll see shows on TV where, you know, somebody's upset, somebody broke up with somebody, and then they'll show the person eating a whole thing of ice cream as they're talking about it, right? Um, there's something about uh, a training of the soul that just says, you're hurting right now here, but we'll just go ahead and feed that. And, and, uh, and we come over and we are more soulish about it than we are in the spirit. And so when we put to the side as much as we can our soul, where we're in praise and worship, where we are taking our time, our, our, our finances, everything you know, kind of required of us, and we, and, and we do that, and what it does is it puts our soul in a spot like sit down. You know, and then the hunger that we have starts to come forward. And that's when we have uh, a move of spirit of the spirit. That's totally different. Ever notice that you ever go to what they call like a believers convention? You know, I love I love that Kenneth Kaufman calls it that, you know, or there's other ones that have different conventions that are like that. We have had, you know, everything from Friday Night Freedom to whatever. What that's really saying is. Get ready before you get here for Friday night freedom. Hunger the freedom before you ever get here. Set to the side your soul, your flesh, and be going after them. Crave those gifts that they might move during the service. See, if we would get in that mode, that's why, you know, um, I heard Kenneth talk about that where it's we're going to crave those good gifts and, and we're going to uh, believe before we ever get together. That's why they call it a believer's convention. Otherwise, you're like starting the engine the first night you get there. It should have already been primed way before. See, uh, have you ever been to uh, Benny Hinn for a healing conference? Anybody who's been there, you know, you don't just show up and then all of a sudden at the beginning, it's 7 o'clock, okay, we're going to start believing God for something. People have been believing God for weeks and months. And then when they get together, there's prayer going on all over the place. You might be waiting out in an auditorium or something like that. And people are praying in just pockets all over the place. And then when they get in there, Benny's usually not even out yet. Right? He hasn't even preached yet. He's in the back. And people are getting healed already. This is how it works. Because they're craving and they're longing and they're allowing that to come forward. Earnestly desire and zealously cultivate the greatest and the best gifts and graces. Now, if we, we uh, allow ourselves, and this is without condemnation, but if, if you want a test of this, just go through Walmart and just kind of, uh, you know, notice the people around you and someone in a wheelchair and someone with a broken leg and someone coughing, someone like that, you know, and, and does it come up inside where it's like, man, I want this to operate through me. Then I just go lay hands on this person and they're healed. Or it's like, oh, it's so sad. And then we walk away. See, if we're in the mode of craving what God has for us, we notice it everywhere we go. It's like, there's a need that needs to be met. Oh God, anoint, change. Let this flow through me. I crave all the gifts. Whatever's needed in this moment, the best gift that that person needs right now, that's what I'm craving. See? So this morning, our prayer of agreement is going to be to kickstart that. Right? We don't have much for kickstart motorcycles anymore. They're automatic, so, but, you know, but... You know, there's sometimes it's, you know, it's you kick it for a while and trying to get that thing going. And at the same time, that's what we're, we're going to do. And the prayer group kind of sets a tone for 
uh, the body as they come through the door. We need to begin craving. So the focus is going to be, God, teach me about the gifts. I need this, Lord God. I want that. I crave this. I earnestly, I am so hungry for this. And if you don't find yourself hungry, then find a way. Say, God, what do you want me to do that will create that hunger? Because sometimes I'm just not in my flesh and my soul. I ain't hungry for it. I mean, let's be honest. It's kind of like, well, that'd be nice anyways. I'm busy right now. Let's go do this. I mean, if you just pay attention to how you're thinking at that moment, there isn't that earnest craving. And to not have the earnest craving just when there's a need. See, this is what he wants us to cross over into, walking by the Spirit so that it's not like, oh, I heard something happen to so-and-so, and we all gather, and suddenly we earnestly crave the gifts. It's like, hurry, get the fire suit. <laughs> We're in the fire already. Hurry, get the fire suit. Should have had it on before. And so this is what God's wanting this morning is for us to begin to cry out to him and in desire. Now, here's the funky part. If you've never done that before, when I go, let's just go ahead and I'll just cry out to him. You might not know what to say. Just, just being honest about it, right? Because we're not in the habit of craving and longing. And just and, and another part of it is his gifts are here, just receiving. Being in the mode of like, I crave this, Lord God, and I receive it. I crave it, and I receive it. I got all oh, more, Lord God, more. I crave it, and I receive it. Walking through your house, I crave this, and I receive it. Even more, increase, increase, increase in this, Lord God. And then when you see the needs, you're already ready. See that? Let's stand this morning. <clears throat> but earnestly desire, desire, really strongly hunger, desire, covet the greatest the best gifts and graces.